Hi, and welcome back to Samad Saran Base. I have a couple of questions uh, over this period, I suppose, when we're all isolated at home uh, about live setups. And I know we've spoken about uh, pre and post uh, DI and all that sort of thing. Uh, but there's a couple of typical live setups that I use uh, that I'd like to go through. You might find this information useful. So uh, this amplifier here is my trusty Roland Cube 100. This has been uh, running for, I'd say it's about 10 years now. And it's a very, very useful tool. It's 100 watts, 12 inch speaker. It's got a concentric little speaker, which acts as a, as a horn, as a tweeter. But it's not as not quite as raspy as a, as a tweeter because it's actually a cone speaker, which sounds really, really nice. And there's a lot of features on the amp, um, but this is not a review of the amp per se, but I'll, I'll go through a few of the things very quickly in a minute. So typically when we're doing a gig where there's a front of house and I need a stage monitor, this is the guy that I use. And the reason I use the Roland is because it has a pre-post switch on the DI out. It has a separate line out, which is good if somebody else needs a signal from it. Um, it's got a four band EQ. It's got effects on board that I don't use, uh, typically because I'll, if I need effects, I don't really use them, but sometimes I'll use a chorus, I just use a, a boss pedal. Um, and it's got a compressor, it's got a, a pad on the input, which can be very important with active basses if they're very hot output. So it has all the professional tools that you need to, to use it in, in several different ways. So typically I use it, send the signal to front of house through the DI as pre-EQ. The EQ on this is used so that I want to hear what I want to hear on stage. It doesn't affect the front of house at all. And most sound engineers, that's what they want. They just want a nice, clean bass signal. They will EQ uh, the bass out the front and get it sitting nicely in the mix, right? So it's not too boomy and not too bright, not too clanky or whatever. Um, and that's very, very important that, that you're able to uh, help them do that. The other thing is um, if, I, if I play pre-EQ settings, this is what it will sound like. Now I'll switch that over to post EQ. And this is the post EQ. So this is my settings for on stage, right? So there you can see that my requirements on stage for EQ are markedly different to what front of house would probably want. So, so um, and typically when you have it sitting up like this, it's very close to my ear and the level is quite low and I can hear myself perfectly well, perfectly well, uh, it'll need more bass. So typically if I've got it on the floor, the bass might be at say one o'clock. Now it might be on something like three o'clock because it's sitting further up and there's less interaction with the surface of the floor. But that's okay because that's only affecting my sound and not the sound out the front. And typically that's how I use this as a stage monitor. If it's a small gig, I'll put it on the floor. I'll find a good spot for it as we discussed in the positions video. And, and go with that. And as long as I can hear myself and the others, I'm all good. I'll just run through some of the stuff on the back of this and why I really like this amp. And then we'll run through my other setup when I'm not using an amp and I'm using in-ear monitors and how that signal chain looks. So here we have the uh, input with an input pad for those active bases where the signal may be too hot. 
there is a one knob compressor with that little red LED that comes on to indicate it's active. There is a shape control if you want to scoop the mids a bit. Here you have um, some amplifier modeling. I typically, typically use this on super flat, but you can go to things like flip top and bass mans and trace Elliott's and uh, acoustic 360s and all, all that sort of stuff. If you're looking for a different basic sound, there is a gain and a volume. Uh, effects go from chorus, flanger, and touch wah, also delay and reverb. They are foot switchable. So you can plug a pair of foot switches into the back and turn those on and off. Now, bear in mind if your DI output is going pre, none of these will have any effect in the front of house. There's a phone's output here, which is the regular quarter inch size, and that pretty much covers the control panel. Very simple, very functional. You can see there is two foot switch jacks, delay and reverb and the other effect. There is an extension speaker for an 8 ohm extension speaker. Uh, line out and a tuner out, which is a very, very good feature. So sometimes, occasionally, if the drummer is using in-ear monitors and I'm not, he might grab this line out and plug it into his system, right? Then uh, the tuner out, which is very handy. Then we have either line out or DI out, which is the pre-post switch. It's just labeled a little differently, does the same thing. A ground lift on, on this uh, balanced output. And as I said, typically I will use this as a DI out pre-EQ so that the uh, sound guy can uh, do what he needs with it. And it's a very simple back panel. However, it's got a lot of functionality for such a small amp, which is why I really, really uh, like to use the Roland Cube. So that's the basic setup when I'm using an amplifier. Of course, if I was doing a big show on a very big stage, that would be replaced by my GK rig. So, you know, it's just more power, but it's essentially the same sort of thing. So the Roland has been uh, a very good, a very good tool. It has all those professional features and I had to replace the power cable on it because the power cable started to fray and having a look inside the electronics, they are really, really built like a tank. These things, I, a credit to Roland is that they are built to go the distance. They will really, really do it. So whether or not it's your uh, preferred flavor of sound of an amplifier um, is a different matter. That's a matter of taste. But as far as the functionality and, and the robustness of the product, uh, very highly recommended. These little things are great. So now this is the second situation which I work with which is when we're using our own front of house system and in-ear monitors. So what happens there is I'll use a preamp, either the Alembic if I've got room, or even just the Sans amp. And that goes through the, um, the XLR out here, the balanced out, and that goes to a channel on the, um, on the desk on the other than Heath, which is for my, my in-ears. Now, that, that channel sounds like this. And any EQ adjustments I make here are fed to my in-ears, which is perfect. The other channel is for front of house. And that one is not routed to my in-ear send. And my, uh, my in-ear my in send channel is not routed to front of house. And the front of house is not routed to my in-ear send. So let's have a listen to what happens at the front of house. And now at the front of house console, 
we can add the EQ to that channel, which is going to the front speakers. Again, does not affect my in-ear mix. So right there, you can see that I have um, two separate channels going on. One that is coming back to my in-ears, one that is going to the front of house speakers. They're EQ'd independently. Now that's uh, simply through this SANS amp at the moment. I can do the same thing with all my preamps. So I'm just taking the parallel output or the direct output uh, going to the front of house and the balanced output or the one that is affected by the EQ, depending on which preamp you're using, to feed the in ear. So I can sit there and twiddle and make adjustments so I'm hearing what I want to hear. The front of house sound is preset either by ourselves or by an engineer. So at sound check, we'll typically, I'll put the wireless on the bass, go out the front, have a listen to what it sounds like, and then when we're happy with that balance, that doesn't get touched generally during the night. Then I'll come up and fix my in-ear sound. So there's a couple of things here. And one of them is now the, you can see that the, the front of house channel has its own EQ, which you can switch in and out. The channel that goes to my send has no EQ preset because that's coming from the preamp. And on my send, I will generally have the front of house signal off, just like that. And only the uh, base channel for my in-ears on. So that gives you separate control over the front of house that way you're absolutely able to dial in the sound for each application, the front of house and the in-ear monitors. And obviously that, that's the best scenario you can have with uh, this system. So the only other thing that changes here is that I could plug a wireless unit into the preamp. So my bass is wireless. I can have a wireless unit as I do at the moment for my in-ear monitors. So I'm completely free to roam around and play. Uh, sometimes I'll forego all the wireless stuff if I'm reading and sitting in one place or standing in one place for that matter. So I just keep it simple. If I don't need the wireless, I won't use it. If I do need the wireless, I'll just plug it into that same system. And then you'll find what happens is you, en you, you end up with uh, great control of the overall sound, great control of the in-ear mixes, and that allows you to play the way you, you want to play because you're hearing what you want to hear without ever affecting the sound at the front of house which you've perfected du during sound check. And considering that 50% of what we're giving people is the audio, the sound, the other 50% might be visual, it might be a slightly different balance for, for different genres, whatever, but it doesn't matter. The sound is, of course, very, very important. So the better that the sound is, uh, the better job that you're doing for the audience and yourself, because you need to be able to hear nice and clearly. And of course, in-ears allow you to do that. So I hope you found this informative. As ever, thanks for watching. Keep making music, keep playing bass, look after yourselves, look after others. And I'll see you guys at the next video. In the meantime, stay well. See you soon.